This is Boxing Tickets NI in association with SB Sports. We're delighted to be joined once again with Big Bang Pierce O'Leary. How are you, mate? All good, Steve. All good. How are you? We, we're back to normal. Obviously, we've obviously had our, our couple of interviews in person, obviously, in the last <coughs> well, last fight week. And now we're we're back, unfortunately, to the Zoom, um, Zoom mantle that we have. But, but I guess, are you sort of... I guess obviously Belfast long in the rear view mirror now, but I guess obviously you look back, they obviously a, a special night for you. Obviously, what a way to sort of re announce coming back and be fighting in Ireland with a first round stoppage. You probably nearly don't even feel like you fought. You know, it was what about a minute the fight lasted and was over. You were, you were probably more able to enjoy the rest of the card and nearly even forgot you'd fought in the night. Um, you know, yeah, <clears throat> that's true. I, um, I went out and I was expecting a, a tough fight and went out and I done that first minute and as soon as as soon as I felt I felt the ref push me away to stop to stop stop the fight. It was, it was some relief, you know, it was some relief. But um and then obviously then just sitting there and watching the watching the watching Connor come walk, make his ring walk and in the arena and stuff like that, like it, it was unbelievable. You know, it was unbelievable. But at the same time, um, at the same time when I was walking out, so on my ring walk, um, when I was walking out, it was special. Um, I, I, I was literally at the board where the corners got pulled across, and I was just in the crowd because previous when I went out to see the see the ring, I uh, see the ring and the, the stadium. I start, it was empty. <clears throat> you know, it was not like it was only I think it was one or two fights that was like. I think it was the fourth or the second fight that was happening. I'm not, not quite sure. But the place is empty. And I'm like, um, I'm like, oh yeah, this is big, big stadium. But when I was walking out, I wasn't expecting it to be full the way it was. And I thought it was going to be empty still, you know. But as soon as the corns got pulled, and it must have been about 15 by 30 corn that got pulled across. And I'm just looking and I was like, say, holy shit, man, this is unbelievable. And uh, as soon as I started walking, and the other side getting behind you then. It was literally tunnel vision. It was unbelievable. Went into the ring, looked around, and like, this is it. This is where I'm going to make a big slam. And I went down and done it. Is, is that was sort of GG up, sort of, you know, when you're making your ring walk, I guess sometimes you, you get that tunnel vision, you're focused on the fight, you can't get let the atmosphere get the better of you, but <clears> when you're seeing that reception you got. And, and that was two weekends in a row. Obviously, Thomas Carty had a big effect on the three arena show. Where obviously he brought a lot of the crowd in early. You brought a lot of the crowd in early. Obviously starting off the the BT show as it was at that stage. But when you have that sort of so many people there to support you and everything else, did that just G on you going? I'm going in here and I'm going to put on a demolition job. Yeah, listen, the uh, the, the the fans the fans are there to support you and watch it. Um, I'm just going out there. I'm just doing me, um, because at the end of the day, the fans can't get in there fully for you. So if you're not fully focused and you think that what the fans are thinking, that's just that's going to be your downfall. So I just grin there. What about myself? What about the, the the job that I have a task, and and then just go from there. But but we brought a good few people up. You know, um, it was it was it was tremendous. Good bought bought a lot of um families and, and kids up and stuff like that but listen when I fight in Dublin it's going to be a sellout it's literally people going to be screaming outside to get tickets and um, as I said off camera before um, that's where I haven't been on a show yet the, the seven the best the last definitely as obviously we're, we're seeing so like the last the last time obviously when you fought it was a week after Katie Taylor so you couldn't get the to go to the three arena to watch this Obviously, the week before your fight this time, there's obviously a show in the RDS arena. It just seems like everybody's teasing you, but it's probably teasing you in a good way so that it, it makes you more hungry for whenever it becomes your opportunity to fight in Dublin. I say it'll be, it'll be must-see. The demand for tickets will be crazy. It, it just seems it was going to market it in the right way that when Big Bang returns to Dublin, all hell's going to break loose. Yeah, definitely. Listen, we, we, we've got plans to do it. Um... And when 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 it does, it's gonna be for a big title. So, and that's only around the corner. So, it's it's not too far away. And hopefully, when when I break that moment of, when I break that moment of get getting the fight in Dublin, I wanna I wanna have that place, as my home, fight there regularly. 
I'd only just fight there once a year. I want to fight there probably two, three times a year in Dublin. Where you're racking up and you're selling so many tickets and stuff like that. We're a big fan, fan base. Um, because at the end of the day, we've got, I've got so much support do you know what I mean, from everyone. So um, it's only a matter of time. Once, once, once I'm on the show in Dublin and crack it, that's it then. That, there's no turning back. And like, as I was just saying to you there, I was before we're starting it, it's crazy to think you're still only 23. You're obviously coming up now four years as a pro. It's probably fair to say you're probably really, you know, I guess at the very start of your career, and I know we've touched on this before, obviously your nickname was Big Bang, and in your first few fights, you obviously weren't getting the stoppages, but in your last six fights, you have five stoppage wins, and you've actually dropped, obviously, the, the opponent in the other fight as well. You'd actually dropped him early in the fight as well, and obviously it ended up going the distance. Obviously, Big Bang's fully living up to the name now. Obviously, it's and I've and I've said to you many times, you're probably one of the you're one of the top obviously fighters in, in world box now. I would fear whenever your timing's on point, there's only one way the fight's going, that's be stoppage. Yeah, well, even like <clears throat> inspired now as well. Like me, everything is all on point timing. Um I'm feeling very fit, working very hard, um, everything's not really good, but the big bang, uh, the big bang name. That's always, it's always been there. I'm always been, been, um, been living up to that. Um, whether that's inspired or whether that's in, in the amateur and stuff like that. It's just people haven't been known of it. And listen, I've been doing a lot of big bang inspired with people, and I'm the kind of people, I'm the kind of person who, who keep that off social media because I'm respectful, um, and a lot of a lot of stuff that people don't know about. So. I'll just keep doing what I'm doing and um, on the fight night what I do or not once I get the win that's that, that's the main thing for me do you know what I mean um, and I'll just keep on pushing on but I think even in the even at the very start of my career um, it was really all guns blazing you know and um, obviously my old coach Philip we, we walked on like it was all uh, always aggressive and 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 not realizing that when when the rounds go up, you're gonna fatigue a lot more, you know, because it's st you're still coming from the amateur background. But now that's all changing, and he's seen a bigger look on that also. And even even with me now, when I go back there, back to the club, Dublin Docklands, like he knows how to pace me on pads and stuff like that. Where before we never knew any that I didn't know any of it either. So so you're both really in the unknown. When I came to the UK, then I was just that's when I all switched up then, um, and then that's where I started getting all the KOs and stuff like that, like a lot more. But yeah, listen, the Big Bang name has always been there. I'm always been living up to it. Just it's been it just hasn't been on on shelf. It definitely is one of them. It's you know if people were questioning the sort of the nickname of the start going, why is he called Big Bang? You know, is it is it he likes you know Big Bang Theory or you know whatever else it was? People obviously now realize why you're called Big Bang and. And say, you know, you're in the form of probably your life. It's probably fair to say at the moment, five stoppages in your last six and you've dropped your last six opponents. You're obviously going to be coming full into confidence, obviously, in four weeks' time. You're obviously fighting what looks on paper is obviously a very tricky and very tough opponent in Kane Gardner. Do you know much of him? I know it sort of hasn't really been released from Frank yet, but obviously we're able to find out from, from Box Rec where they sometimes put this up. But do you focus too much on Kane Gardner now you're... Do you just let, obviously, your coaches, Al and stuff, just do the work in the background? You just focus on doing what you do? I just do what I do. Uh, and obviously, it hasn't been announced yet, but a lot of people have been asking me about, fighters, about the fighter. And it, I've got that fighter now locked in, for, I think it was pretty much for the last six weeks, maybe. So, so yeah, listen, I, I, I'm excited for it. He, he's excited for it. He thinks he's going to come and win. I'm gonna come and win. Um so listen, both styles gonna clash. So I think it's gonna be a really good fight. Uh, I don't know much of him. I've never seen him really box. But with my self belief and what I'm doing down, um I just don't think he won't be on my level, I don't think. It's these sort of tests sometimes you want, obviously sometimes rather, you know, it's different styles from different places, obviously when you've had the foreign opponents sometimes you just can't cope where the power was there and you've sort of nearly had them beat before they've got into the ring. You know, the Clark Kent Superman sort of thing that we, we sort of sometimes touch on. But when you're obviously you're, you're fighting a, a fighter that's from the UK, 
he's probably going to offer you something different maybe you haven't seen before, but for you, it's just tunnel vision and get the win no matter which way it comes. Yeah, listen, I, to be honest with you, Steve, I think I've seen it all. Um, I've seen most of it, especially for the age I'm at. I've inspired pros since I'm 16, 17. Um, good pros as well, like in Ireland. And what I've been doing, and what I've been learning um, since what I've been doing over here in the UK, it's and who I'm inspiring. The confidence is like, I don't, it's not arrogant, but my confidence is really, really high. Um, and I believe myself, and as I should, because I put the work in, I put 100% in. I'm not, I'm not some bouncy who was just training and just doing, just doing little, little bits of sessions. I mean, obviously, think I'm the best. Do you know I mean? I think I'm the best because I put the hours in, I put the work in. So that's the sort of mindset I've got. It's, it's obviously a great mindset they have, you know, particularly, you know, any fighter sort of lives in confidence nowadays. And obviously that, that you, you're confident, but probably not overconfident. I guess that's where you can get into a, a bad transition sometimes. If you get too confident, you think that nobody can sort of stand in your way. But how's the know, Pierce? You could go your whole career undefeated. You just don't know it at this stage yet. Yeah, listen, listen, that's, that's exactly it. You just don't know. And at the same time, what you said there is correct. I'm confident, but I'm not overconfident, you know. Like I'm um like obviously you still get the nerves, you still get everything like that going going into the fights and stuff like that, which is very good and which is very important. But I'm not gonna sacrifice all this time right from right from my daughter and my family and just think, oh yeah, it's okay if I lose or at least I'm second. Do you know what I mean? Like that's that's not what I that's not what I do. I'm coming here. I wanna be the best. And um Make as much power as possible, and 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 set me life up. How's your daughter? Obviously, you know she's getting to a wee bit stage now where she's starting to understand a bit more of it. How is she sort of coping with with her daddy as a sensational boxer? It's it's fighting on TV. Is is she sort of coming to terms with the fact that my daddy's a boxer, or is some of it still sort of still unknown? Nah, to her? she nah, she she under, she understands. She understand. She understood from. From the age of one and a half, maybe. <laughs> Same as she could start walking and that's it. Like she she she's she seen, do you know what I mean? So um she's been to, uh she's been to t- t- me fights, the one where in November and obviously the one in um in May in Belfast. So yeah, she 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 lo- she actually loves going to them. She um she likes them. But when the fights get a little bit puffer into them into the war stages then I don't think she'll don't think she'll she'll come and watch do you know what I mean? Um, good luck, Omen. They have well. What's it? Good luck, Omen. They have as well. Obviously, when you have your kids there, you obviously you want to make sure you perform. Yes, sometimes they put that extra pressure on you to perform, but but obviously having your kids there, you want to do obviously obviously your utmost to make sure they don't see you obviously losing. Do you, know, do you know what? To be honest with you, you can't even out. You don't even notice them. You don't even notice people there. Literally, you're, just, you're fully focused in, and all, all you all you're worried about is the task in front of you. Literally. Him across the way, you don't care who's there, um. Like, even even like it's it's crazy because when I when I actually walked out before I seen her, it was like um, it was a bit of a, a mad feeling. When I literally as soon as I got to the ring, I forgot all about it. I literally, I forgot all about it, and it's just weird. Like I don't think someone has to experience it to actually talk to them because it's so hard to explain. But yeah, listen, that 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 like. I think, I think she won't, she likes boxing, but I don't think she'll um, she'll go to all of them. You know what I mean? When the when the when the the war level stages become. As long as Daddy's bringing home the money for her, that's all she's really probably going to be interested. That's, 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 that's all that matters. That's all that matters. Once you're going back with the with the check on your health, that's all that matters. Yeah. Was was your ears burning last week? Obviously, with Matthew Tyndall, who obviously has looked up to you, and obviously I spoke to Thomas Carty as well, and. They both obviously, you know, in different stages, obviously Matthew's just turning pro, Thomas Carty's obviously just won obviously his first belt as a pro. But both of them look up to you in ways. Thomas Carty looks up to you because of your stoppage performances. Obviously, stoppages get people talking. Matthew, obviously, on the other hand, obviously, I think obviously you were there giving him support at times through his amateur career. I think in particular when he fought Cal Walsh in the 18s. When you're hearing people saying that you're obviously an inspiration, they look up to you. 
even you at 23 years of age, you sort of go, is this some, some sort of joke? Do, can you take that in if people look to you as an inspiration? Um, no, I can't really. I can't really. Um, it's actually a mad, it's a mad, that's actually a mad feeling as well at the same time because even when, even when I'm back home around going around the area and stuff like that and, and like this little like there's little kids come up run up to me and stuff like that and saying, Oh, are you person early? And I'm like and I'm looking at them to say, What you're on about, what, what the fuck you're on about? But well, I just think I just think because I never had anyone like that growing up, there was not really a massive big blueprint of people talking about a certain person around the area. Um and obviously now I'm that people talk about me regardless of around the area journey. So when kids are looking up to me and like that, and even, even, even it's actually, it's actually crazy because all my stuff that's sticking on social media, um, a lot of um, addict recoveries and recovering like people from um, drugs and stuff like that, they, they did be text me saying, keep up the posts and stuff that help me get through day to day. And, that 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 there, that's powerful. Like that, that's strong. And you you say you say, Jesus Christ, like that. I never, I never actually ex- expected that off someone. You know what I mean? And um, and but I don't look at that any different. Like I, I don't go around with a big head around and think like think I'm 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 a certain person. Or I'll deal with this or I'll deal with that. Like I'm still the same person that I was at the age of fifteen. Like there's no no change. Probably still got the same number that everyone else has. Like um, I just I just still me, you know. And listen, if we can help people along the way, I'm gonna I'm gonna help them because a lot of people help me, and I just, I want to have that feeling of giving back and helping someone else, and it's the only way, you know. So having people looking up to me is is a great thing, and I was doing something right. But realistically, I'm nowhere there. I'm nowhere near where I want to be. Yet. It's great. It's great to have. Obviously, I say when people look up to you, and and it's only going to get it's only going to get stronger. Obviously, you know, as, as you get more successful, more people's going to latch on. Obviously, you know, people's going to say, oh, "I can remember Pierce when he was knee height the grasshopper." You know, I can remember him doing this and that. You know, more people's going to come out from the woodwork. But I guess, particularly with addicts and stuff like that on the road to recovery, if what you're doing is helping them, then you know, even more people you can help look out the better because it's. It's helping people to change their lives. Oh, 100%, definitely, definitely. And listen, that's what it's all about. You know what I mean? That's what it's all about. It's all about, like, because when I come over here, like, come over here with a backpack and, um, like, so many, so many people over here help me out. You know what I mean? So many people help me out and I'm forever grateful for. So, I think once, whatever you put out there in the universe, it's going to come back to you 10 times. So, I guess, obviously, is. I was going to say there as well. Obviously, um, two big bangs are obviously appearing on the on the same card. Obviously, it's Shang and Joyce. Um, obviously, it's going to be the battle of, battle of the big bang on the, obviously on the night. Um, obviously, you'll get on first, so you'll obviously you'll make that impression everybody that you're the you're, you're the legitimate big bang, and that obviously yeah. Shang's just an understudy to you. Yeah, that's listen. Doesn't matter what I do, Steve. Once I go out there and perform the way I want to perform. Uh, the results. Once I go out there and get the win, um, that's all that matters. Um, it doesn't matter which way I do it. Once I go out and perform to me best, get the results, win. Where uh, regardless of what jo- um Joyce and Zhang do, I don't care. That's nothing to do with me. I just want to. I want to fight, win, up the rankings again, and back out soon. And and do you see this as being your last? Obviously, with it being you know near the end of September, does it seem like this is your last fight of the year? Is there plans maybe to get out once more before the end of the year? Ah, uh, definitely out or back out again in December, hundred percent. Um, definitely back out in December. Listen, that's the momentum I need. You know, it's no point having two fights in a year, which is it's not great. Um, financially ain't great either. Like, so you need to keep the momentum going, keep people talking about you. Keep the social media going. Um, the more momentum you have, the more momentum you've got, and everything else. Like, so you're always going to be in people's mind. Um, obviously you're going to keep on building your ticket sales and stuff like that, building your fan base. So, for me, key is momentum. Um, so I'll go back out again in probably um mid 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 end December. 
depends on when, when Frank and Queensbury has a card on and then fighting that. And obviously your first time appearing in TNT Sports, obviously I renamed from BT to TNT. So you obviously had a stoppage on, the, I think was it one of the last BT shows. So I guess it'd be, it'd be a good obviously comparison now to, to, to get another stoppage on TNT, obviously. Um, as that was obviously your, your feeling get into the fight, but in four weeks' time, do you feel obviously that you can get Craig Gardner out of it, Kane Gardner, sorry, out of there? Or obviously is it just not focusing too much on it just yet? I'll get anyone out there, Steve. Um, I, I, I don't go and look for it. And that's one thing I don't do. I don't go looking for it. But I know the shots were on that. Were, what we walk, we've been walking on certain stuff in the gym. Um, yeah, I, I think, I think, um, I don't think, I can't say it on the distance. I guess sometimes it's, it's unfair for you. Sometimes that people just speak so much in your power. You've obviously a lot more to your box and that probably people haven't got to see, which is probably a good thing for you. I, I think I picked up on it with Potty McCrory before when he was stopping people in early on in fights. You're not giving future opponents a chance to see what you've been working on. So there's a lot, obviously, within that toolbox you have, Pierce, that people haven't even seen yet because you haven't had to use it. There's literally a, a quart of stuff I've been using since my career so far. Um. When I'm sparring those bigger lads in the gym, well, the weights, low middle weights, like, and, and and what I'm being able to do in there, like it's 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 crazy, do you know what I mean? And obviously, obviously, I haven't got the opportunity to do that yet in a fight because I'm being stopping them. But um, it's kind of a good thing, a good thing as well because when the tough gets going, that's what's in my arsenal. We have to pull that out and go and get the job done. And uh, people want to expect that. People just think we can take this power. I wear in that. I wear them down. Realistically, I've got an IQ like now. What I really, you know, like um, the boxing IQ is fantastic. Um, and people just think you're at the power. So when 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 the power is now no option no more, I can pull something out of the back. You know, like so. For me, let people talk about power. Just just leave them be. Just leave them be. You know, I mean, I'm I'm regardless. Once I still talk about me, that's all that matters. <laughs> that's all that matters. Definitely is. Well, listen, obviously, I'll, I'll thank you very much for your time. Um, as always, obviously, I wanted to get this a couple of weeks out so you could just focus on your training. Obviously, enjoy your, your last three weeks of obviously camp before you lead into fight week. Um, but obviously, we can't wait to see you back in the ring in four weeks' time when you move to 13-0 and and defend your, your WBC international title. Yeah, I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward. Uh, we tried to get another belt on the line, but I don't think we did. Um, I haven't I haven't spoke up about it, but um, I hope you'll have something else soon. Right, well, listen, thanks very much for your time as always, Pierce, and enjoy the rest yeah. of your weekend. Thanks very much, Steve. Have a great one, right, bud. Pierce, take care. Thanks. Bye-bye. Yeah, Bye-bye. Bye-bye.